There's two ways that you can deal with security when you need to provide data level access to different users. Either you can implement user-based or row-level security, or you can just keep your data so unorganized that no one's going to find anything. Let's talk about the first option today. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. So first of all, what is row-level or user-based security? I've got a nice little dashboard simulation to help you explain it. If you look here, it's a simple three chart dashboard that we've created. And as I log in as different people coming in this case from different continents, you can see that we're showing different data. It's the same dashboard, but is automatically being filtered based on the user that logs in. We did this one specifically based on continent data, but it could be anything. Do you have managers and you need to be able to see the employees under each manager, but not the employees under other managers, that sort of concept. So you can secure this completely based on any different type of security requirement that you have. The caveat is, as long as your data has some way for us to filter on it. So if you want us to filter by manager type or something like that, make sure you have that in the data. Now here's why rule level security is important. Let's take a look at this dashboard here. And you'll notice that I'm showing different stores that have different regions, different stores under each region. And in this case, I have the ability to drop down and select the region that I want to see or select the store that I want to see. You may very well want to set this up using row level security and not provide filters right on the dashboard because you might not want to have an employee from the Northwest region looking at the data for people in the Southern region. So don't put that filter on and let them drill down. Same thing, you may have a regional manager who's able to see all the stores underneath, but you might have store managers who are only able to see specific stores. So it is really important to be able to have this segmented and potentially not available to everybody to see. You might also want to have a higher level employee who's able to come in and see everything, and that's fine. The idea behind this is you're able to build a single dashboard and just as the users come in, make sure they see the correct content. You could very well set this up so that you've built many different dashboards, each for each level of the employee, but that just makes things a little bit more complex. This is really nice because then information baked into the actual user account determines what they're going to see on the dashboard. Now, the other thing that's very important about this is where this rule level security applies. If you're a major corporation and you don't want your Q3 numbers out yet, but you still have to allow your developers to get in and build reports and content based on it, role level security is still something that might make a lot of sense. You can set it up so that the user isn't able to yet see the data, but the developer can still come in and build the content that they need. So that only you, when you view the dashboard, are actually going to see the right numbers, but the developer might see something else because they do need data to work with to build the content. So this isn't just about viewing, this is also about securing the data during the creation process. Also, it's really important if you're going to give self-service capability. If I'm a store manager and I want to come in and use a business intelligence tool to explore our data, it's really nice to be able to go to a single place. Everybody goes to that same place, so a data warehouse, and as I use it, I see my data, as you use it, you get your data. So it's still segmented even from a creation standpoint. So how do we set up role level security? Well, first of all, if you've already done any of this work already in an existing database, stop right now. You don't need to do anything else in order to get this working in Dundas BI. And this is a fairly unique thing in the BI landscape. Most BI vendors are going to force you to re-implement this security in their system. What we do here at Dundas is we actually do something called impersonation. As you view content, we take your user information and we pass that directly on to the data connector. That allows the data connector to just segment the data and bring back what it needs to automatically. We don't have to do anything. We don't really have to touch it, which is great. If you don't have it already built into your data source, well, that's when we implement it on Dundas BI and you use something called a security hierarchy. Let me show you how to do this. So it all starts at the user level. I'm in the administration screen right now, and you would start by building something called a custom attribute. You can see that I have a lot of these already defined, so you can have an attribute based on anything. Create a new attribute that you want to see, and basically just give it a name and a data type. 
Once you've got that, go over to your user. So here's my account. Let's open it up. And you'll notice there's a section here for custom attributes. You can add which custom attributes that you've already created you want to associate with certain users. By the way, you should do this with groups if you've got a lot of users. It makes a lot more sense rather than doing this on each individual user. But this is an easy way for me to work and test it. So I've added continent to mine. Let's edit it. You can see that my continent is already set to North America. So that's how I'm going to do this filtering. As I log in, we're just going to filter the data by the term North America directly. Okay, once that's done, you will need to log off and log in if you set this up. So if you're seeing any weird behavior when you're testing, just log in the user again. So just do that very quickly. Then what we do is everything is built on the data cube. So go and create a data cube. In my case, I've got a table here. And you'll notice if we look at the data that we do have a continent in here. So that's what I'm going to be filtering on. Now setting this up couldn't be easier. Go to your process result. Choose the field that you want to be filtering on. Open it up and just say use as security hierarchy. Once you do that, it's going to ask you which custom attribute you want to use. So here's that continent one that I have. You also may not want to show the hierarchy. So if you're filtering automatically by employee ID, you may want to use this hide hierarchy button because it will simply remove it from showing up in the data. It'll just be filtering there silently and it'll just work. User won't even know it's there. In my case, I do want to see the continent. So that's it. Our role level security is already ready to be used. So let's just go and build a dashboard. And if I go and find that data cube that we already created and I drag city onto here, I'm only getting cities from North America. So it's automatically working for me based on my user that logs in. Anybody else who views the content that I create will simply get their own data. So it works perfectly. So that's all it takes. If you want to set this up yourself, you can see how it's done. Also, if you want to learn more fine details about how to do this, run over to our support site and look up the term security hierarchy. You'll find a great article that will walk you through everything you need to know about this. Also, if you want to learn more about this, go over to our case studies. Here, you can learn about a company called Viamedia, who used rollable security heavily for their distributed sales staff around the United States. Great article if you want to see someone actually using this in practice. Hope this has been helpful, and we'll see you next time.